Ketamine and MDMA might sound like party drugs, but in a clinical setting, they're revolutionizing mental health treatment in totally different ways. One rewires your brain's connections in just a few sessions, the other gives you access to joy you might not have felt in years. But how do they really work? What's going on in your brain when you take these substances? What are the side effects? And how do the therapy sessions work? Today, we'll break down the science, success stories, and surprising reality of these breakthrough treatments. Ketamine and MDMA have been making waves in the therapeutic world as breakthrough treatments for people struggling with depression, anxiety, and PTSD. A 2012 study found that two ketamine therapy sessions per week improved treatment-resistant depression for 70% of participants in just 15 days. MDMA-assisted therapy has been shown to put chronic PTSD patients into remission after just two or three sessions, with positive effects lasting almost three years after intervention. Both substances promise faster and deeper emotional processing than traditional treatments, but they affect the brain very differently. What is it about MDMA that helps patients confront their trauma, and how come ketamine is so good at treating depression? The secret lies in how these substances play with tiny little brain chemicals called neurotransmitters. Let's start with MDMA. MDMA increases two key chemicals in the brain. The first is serotonin. You might have heard it referred to as the happy chemical. That's because its primary function in the brain is to stabilize mood, helping to counteract feelings of depression and anxiety. When balanced correctly, serotonin is associated with contentment, calm, fulfillment, well-being, and emotional stability. The second chemical MDMA increases in the brain is oxytocin, which enhances bonding and trust. Often called the love chemical, oxytocin is released in large amounts during hugging, cuddling, orgasm, labor, and mother-infant bonding. So when you take MDMA, you're boosting the happiness and love chemicals in the brain. It's no wonder MDMA helps people feel safe, supported, and emotionally connected. Entering this mental state allows them to confront traumatic experiences with reduced fear and better emotional clarity. For this reason, it tends to be used in treating PTSD. Ketamine works on an entirely different chemical in the brain, glutamate. Glutamate is like the gas that powers your brain's engine. Without it, your brain cells can't send signals to each other. Glutamate is critical for learning new things, forming memories, movement, thinking, and problem solving. It is also vital for something called synaptic plasticity, a fancy way of saying it helps your brain reorganize and form new connections. Ketamine increases glutamate in the brain, which helps create new neural pathways. But what does this mean for patients? It means that ketamine is really good at getting you unstuck from old, unhelpful, or harmful thought patterns. Ketamine shifts your perception helping you see emotions and experiences from a new perspective, which can be a real lifeline to someone suffering from depression, anxiety, or suicidal thoughts. Okay, so to recap, MDMA enhances emotional connection by boosting happiness and love chemicals in the brain. Ketamine helps you break free from unhelpful thought patterns by boosting neuroplasticity through its action on glutamate. Understanding the science behind these results is great, but seeing an actual patient transformation up close is something else. Through our work at Field Trip Health, I've been fortunate enough to witness the life-changing effects of our therapies on over 1,200 patients from all walks of life. Take Seth, for example. For years, he struggled with crippling imposter syndrome, constantly second-guessing himself, hyper-aware of how others saw him. Even a simple Costco run sent his mind into overdrive. He had been on anti-anxiety meds for years, but when he lost his mother, everything unraveled. That's when he turned to ketamine-assisted therapy. Through his sessions, Seth uncovered something huge. His anxiety wasn't just about work or crowds, it ran deeper, shaped by years of masking his emotions. For the first time, he wasn't just managing symptoms, he was actually healing. Now, crowds don't face him. He left his high pressure corporate job for a career he actually loves, and for the first time in years, he feels in control of his own story. By now, the skeptic in you is probably thinking, hang on, where's the catch? I know, everything I've shared so far seems pretty incredible. But these substances aren't wonder drugs. Like any medicine, both ketamine and MDMA have potential side effects. MDMA temporarily increases serotonin levels. However, the brain needs time to replenish serotonin after each use. In a controlled setting, medical professionals carefully manage the dose and frequency to maximize benefits while minimizing risks. Frequent or high doses outside of medical supervision can deplete serotonin too quickly, leading to mood swings, fatigue, and cognitive difficulties, essentially the opposite of its intended effects. 
That's why MDMA therapy is done under strict medical supervision. Ketamine side effects are different. Some people may experience dizziness or headaches, but the most common side effect is a bit of nausea, which can be easily avoided by taking an anti-nausea medication beforehand. Since ketamine is dissociative, it can create a temporary sense of detachment from reality. That's why doses are carefully monitored in medical settings to ensure the safety and comfort of the patient. So what are these medically supervised psychedelic sessions actually like? What did Seth and others go through to get their amazing breakthroughs? There's a lot of misconceptions out there that might make you think it's a scary experience, but a little anxiety over the unknown is normal. But don't worry, I think you'll find the reality of the sessions comforting. Ketamine therapy can be legally prescribed by clinicians in Canada. Unlike MDMA, which is only taken in oral form, ketamine can be taken in many different forms. It can either be taken through IV infusions, intramuscular injections, nasal spray, or even lozenges you put under your tongue. Ketamine therapy sessions usually last 45 minutes to an hour, and because ketamine works so quickly, most patients start with an initial protocol of six to nine sessions over three to five weeks. Many patients experience lasting benefits after this series, while some may require occasional booster sessions to maintain the effects over time. Ketamine's rapid effect comes from its ability to stimulate brain-derived neurotropic factor, which promotes neuron growth and connectivity. This quickly relieves depression and made a life-changing difference for one of our patients with postpartum depression. After having her baby, Liz felt trapped in a cycle of despair, unable to connect with her children. She turned to ketamine therapy and described it as a turning point in her life. After just a few sessions, she felt emotionally available again, like she finally had access to joy and started reconnecting with her children. MDMA-assisted therapy looks quite different to ketamine-assisted therapy. For starters, it's much harder to access. In Canada, it's only available through Health Canada's Special Access Program or clinical trials. Patients typically work with one or two therapists in a carefully controlled environment designed to be a safe space where they can process deep-seated trauma. MDMA enhances communication between the amygdala, which processes fear and emotion, and the prefrontal cortex, which regulates decision-making and thought, allowing patients to face distressing memories with a clear, less reactive mindset. MDMA therapy sessions are much longer than ketamine therapy sessions, usually lasting around six to eight hours. While ketamine therapy offers several sessions in a few short weeks, MDMA therapy is designed for limited use. Clinical trials will usually space out the sessions to prevent neurochemical imbalances in the brain. MDMA therapy also requires therapists to be present throughout the entire experience to provide continuous support. With ketamine, a therapist may be present during the session, but much of the emotional processing and support happens immediately afterward in an integration therapy session. This is a session where patients reflect on their experience with the guidance of a therapist to reinforce long-term change. One of our patients, Michael, sought MDMA therapy after experiencing traumatic events on duty as a firefighter. Through MDMA-assisted therapy, he was able to process those memories in a way that felt less distressing. He described it as watching a movie of his own life with compassion instead of fear. Ketamine and MDMA-assisted therapy are changing the way we heal our minds. Unlike traditional treatments that just manage symptoms, these therapies go deeper, helping to rewire the brain and process emotions in a whole new way. Instead of numbing the pain, they help us get to the root cause of our trauma, whether it's a big life event or something we've carried for years without realizing it. By creating new neural connections, they open the door to real lasting change, healing from the inside out. Curious about what happens to your body and mind during ketamine therapy? Click this video for a scientific deep dive that will completely change how you see this powerful treatment.